Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today we're excited to check out Triple Eight Dice from Kataco. This is for two to eight players. Age is eight plus. They'll take you, I don't know, about 10 to 15 minutes to play. And in Triple Eight Dice, this is a very simple dice game. Apparently it's been around for more than 70 years in which you are going to be rolling dice. And these dice are going to have different card faces on it, like the Seven of Hearts, uh, the Jack of Clubs, Jokers, different stuff like that. And you're going to be playing three separate games. You're going to be playing Hearts, you're going to be playing Poker, and then you're going to be playing something called Michigan Rummy. It's a very light, simple, luck-driven, dice-style family game. It's seven years old, and we all know how good seven-year-old games normally are. But does this one buck the trend? Does it stand the test of time? Is it a good game? Let's open it up. I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Tripoli Dice. So first and foremost, we have our handy-dandy rule booklet. It's one page kind of, double-sided. It's really weird. It's like this which is kind of odd, but it's uh, really clear, concise, should have you up and running in no time at all. So, thumbs up on the rules, aside from the fact it's kind of a weirdly, weirdly done rules. Like, there's English on the front, Spanish on the back. It's just odd how they did it. Uh, so, in Triple E Dice, you are going to be trying to score the most points after playing three different games. First, you'll play Hearts, and then Poker, and then Michigan Rummy. Each of these games is going to take you, you know, maybe about two to three minutes to play. So, let's go over the components. Let's get into the gameplay. So, first component-wise, the start of the show are going to be these six-sided dice right here, which are going to have different uh, card faces on them. So, four Hearts, Seven of Clubs, Ace of Spades. Uh, there's also going to be Jokers mixed in there, and the Jokers will be very important important and they're incredibly useful when they pop up also you're gonna have this dice cup right here which i'm not gonna use because i hate it because you can't slam it down because then things stack on top of each other a lot of the time that time they didn't but a lot of times they'll be like this and be like ah super annoying so whatever just use your hand the dice cup's stupid but let's show you how the game is played so the first game is called hearts and hearts is a very simple game you are going to get to roll the dice three times on your turn and what you're trying to do is you're trying to acquire hearts ace of hearts king of hearts queen of hearts jack of hearts ten of hearts uh those are going to get you 10 points pop now if you can get eight nine ten in any suit you're also going to get 50 points which is huge also if you can get the king queen of hearts you'll get 25 points so let's just roll it up see what i get i got an absolutely atrocious roll so you know what i'm gonna keep actually you know what this is not bad now that i look at it i got the eight and the ten of diamonds i got the jack of hearts so you know what i keep those three roll it up again and let's see. Oh my gosh, this actually turned out really stinking well. Eight, nine, ten of diamonds. That's going to score me 50 points. Booyah. Then they have the Jack of Hearts, uh, which is 10 points. Hopefully I can get myself some more hearts. And I did. I got the Ace of Hearts. So right there, I would be scoring 70 points. So I would mark it all down on the score pad. Boo -ba -doo -ba -doo. 70 points. And then the next person would do the exact same thing. So I would just sit there and watch them play. And then the next person would do it. And the next person. You can play as many players as you want. It says on the rule of the box. That's wrong. You can't do as many players as you want. And I'll talk more about that in the pros and cons. So, well, be having it be balanced. You can't do as many players as you want. Next, you move on to poker. And poker is going to have you set creating as many of these different hands as you can one pair two pair three of a kind straight three card straight flush full house four of a kind straight flush you're going to be trying to create these poker hands by setting aside the dice so you can create more than one poker hand you only get to roll the dice twice this time though also the uh so let's see what we got here hmm we didn't have it pop up last time, but jokers also could have been used as anything you want. So that's important to note as well in these two game modes. So this is a really poor hand for me. So I got six, seven, eight. So I did get a straight. Uh, so you know what? We'll just keep that straight, I guess. I could, you know what? I'll keep the jack, queen, king. And then I'll keep the two sevens instead. So yeah, now I have a pair and I have a small straight. So let's see what else I can make with these four. Uh, so now it's two pair. Boom. If we get ourselves another seven or another jack, we got ourselves... Oh, Joker perks. Also, with the Joker, uh, in the first two game modes, the hearts and the uh, poker, and I forgot to mention this, if you get a Joker on your last roll, you get to roll again. And in the hearts game, you can roll as many times as you want. In the poker game, you can only re-roll one at a time. So I don't know what I'd actually be trying to re-roll here. So it um, doesn't really matter. But there we go. So I got a full house, and I got a straight. So, let's see, that would get me 60 points and 40 points. So I'd have 100 points at the time. Last, we have Michigan Rummy. Uh, this game is slightly different. You are going to get three rolls. 
as per normal, but this time the jokers are not going to count as wild. And what you're trying to do is the first person is going to try and get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, they're going to try and get the low numbers all in order. So let's just show you. So three rolls. So right now I got a two. That's a great start. I would probably keep the four and the five, and then I would re-roll the rest. So what I'm trying to get now is a three. I really need myself a three, but I did get a six. Maybe I'll hold on to the six. So now I have one more roll left. If I get a three, I'm going to get five, ten, 15, 20, 25. I'm going to get five points for each of the numbers that I have. Now, if I do not get a three, I would only get five points because you're trying to get the longest straight you can. So did I get a three? I did not, which means, boom, I would get five points. And the next person would now be trying to go for three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they don't have to get a two because the two would now be marked off. They would now be trying to get the three, four, five, six. So they'd roll it up and they would, uh, wow, that's really good. Three, four, five, six, and if they're smart, they'd probably be seeing which of these threes would be more or at least helpful to them. Uh, oh, it's seven. Holy moly, eight? Are you kidding me? Wow. Uh, roll one more time. Wow, they got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they would get five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Uh, and then you would do that until you get to the ace. Once you get to the ace, the game is over, and you tally up the points from all three games. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game will be the winner of Triple E Dice. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Triple E Dice from Catico. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the pro side, uh, the game is easy to learn, it's easy to teach. Uh. Alrighty then, Triple E Dice from Catico. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the pro side, the game is easy to learn, it's easy to teach, it's not going to scare anybody away. It's the kind of thing where it's like, oh, here's what you do. You're just trying to roll the dice, and you're trying to get these hearts, these specific hearts, or you're trying to get two, three, four, five, or you're trying to get poker hands. And most of the time, people are going to be familiar with those concepts, and they're not going to be scared away. It's not like the hobby game where it's like the rules are daunting. In fact, the rules, I mean, that's that's it. That's all you got right there. And you can take the, the rules are bite-sized, because this is one game, and, you know, that's one game, and then this is one game. So that's well done. Also, the rules are easy to earn, understand. Um, the dice are nicely made. I mean, I feel like these dice are going to be around another 70 years. They look perfectly serviceable dice. Very well done. Uh, the score pad has room for six players on each one, so they made it really small, which is nice. It is a family style game so you could easily teach this to kids that i would say are six years old or seven years old as long as you explain the different poker hands and help them out with the poker hands i mean i think that's the only one that uh any of the kids in my class really struggled with because they didn't know you know what a straight flush was and a full house so i just had to help them along and the last pro that i have with this game which i'm going to mention as a con as well is that anybody could win this game they really can especially if you're helping kids because it's all 100% for the most part, luck. There is just a teeny, weeny little bit of pressure luck in the Michigan Rummy, but for the most part, it's all just luck. Oh, did you roll a whole bunch of jokers for the heart game? Good for you. You're probably going to win that first round and maybe win the whole game. Likewise, for the poker. Oh, did you get a straight flush? Yeah, there's a good chance you're going to win the game. Um, moving on to the pros, uh, the cons, actually. This game is crap. It's really bad. A and... I want to preface this by saying, if you play hobby games, if you play a lot of strategy games, if you play good games, what I would call good games, you know, good hobby style games, you're gonna hate. You're probably gonna hate this game. You're gonna be like, wow, this game is really poorly designed. There's so many bad things going on in this game. Now, if you don't, then you may think this game is okay. I think that's what I'm going to say. And I actually had this in my class. And I thought this was really interesting. I played with a new kid. And I played it with a game recently. Uh, with a kid that I play a lot of games with. The new kid was like, oh yeah, this is fun. I like it. And the other kid was like, uh, I don't like this game. And I was like, why don't you like this game? She's like, "I, it, it's, it's all just whatever the dice are. And I was like, yes. Yes, Ember. You get it. It's all just whatever the dice are. It's 100% luck. And that's the case with the game. And what really hammered home with her was when she scored zero points on hearts. It was like she's got like an 8-9 of like clubs or something like that. And then she didn't get any of the hearts she needed. And she just started off with zero points. And she had no chance from that point on. Like she just drew a big fat goose egg on the first game and was just like, oh, I guess I'm just going to lose. And I was like, yeah, 
I guess you're just going to lose. And that's the game. It's 100% luck. And for adults, seriously, come on. 100% luck? No, no. You, you want to talk about a kid's game? I can let some of those kids' games that are 100% luck slide because they teach important educational things like counting or up and down with like shoots and ladders and stuff like that, cause and effect. But for adults, no, I can't I can't let that slide. This is 100% luck and it's garbage. It's a bad game and I don't recommend it. I don't care how nostalgic it is. It's not a good game. It's not a well-designed game. Uh, I just, you know, 1940s was not a hotbed of great game design. Sorry, it just wasn't. I guess it'd be 40s and 50s. Either way, no. Triple A Dice is not a good game, and, and I'm immediately going to get rid of this game. And I'm never going to want to play this game ever again. And I could see... Oh, this is another con. Uh, it goes up to eight players, it says in the box. So the rules actually say, you know, two or more players, which implies you can play with like 30 players, which is what I thought when I said the middle part. But it's actually the box says two to eight. But even if you're playing at eight players... Like, no, it's not a two to eight player game. Like, they're just flat out lying on the box. Because here's the thing the Michigan Rummy game is 95 to 99% of the time going to be done, 95 to 100% of the time, going to be done before eight rounds. Which means if you're the eighth player for the Michigan Rummy game, guess what? You don't get a turn. And it's like, I, I just. Uh, and here's the other thing it's imbalanced. That, like, I could just get into picking this game apart like nuts and bowls mechanically, but I won't. But one thing that really annoyed me was I would imagine if you played the six, seven, or eight players and you're playing Michigan Rummy, the player with the highest score goes first. So they actually get a chance to play the Michigan Rummy. And if you're playing fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth, you're probably not going to get a turn to Michigan Rummy, which means you're already in last place and you're not going to get an opportunity to score any points in the third game, which means you will be completely almost eliminated from the third game. It's, it's just dumb. It's just dumb. This is such a dumb design game. Get the hell out of here, Triple A Dice. Sucks. If you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Let me know! What's that nostalgic game in your collection? That it's just, you know it's not good. You know it's not a good game, but you're like, eh, but I got nostalgia for it. I still, I still love that game. Me personally, take a look around. Ooh, Life, Twists and Turns for Milton Bradley. I, I just recently added that one to my collection. Um... I like Phase 10 still. I like Phase 10 Dice as well, which is just completely random. Uh, so yeah, that one might be it too. But let me know in the comments below. What's that nostalgic game you got? It's kind of like a uh, a game that's just, I, do, I only keep it because of the memories I have with it. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.